guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my Back to Basic tutorials. This tutorial is all about piping. A lot of you requested this because I think piping looks very easy, but when it comes to actually doing it, it takes a lot of practice and people don't really know where to start. So I thought I'd do this tutorial to explain how four different types of piping tips work and what you need to look out for and bear in mind when you pipe. For this tutorial, I'm using a batch of my American buttercream. You can use pretty much any buttercream or even ganache as long as it's a nice pipeable consistency. So I'm starting off with a few different colors of my buttercream. I've got some piping tips here, which I'll go through in detail when I use them. And I'm going to start by filling up some piping bags because of course, that's a great place to start. What I also have is a tool cup because this really comes in handy when you fill up a piping bag. People tend to cut the tip off their piping bag before they put the piping nozzle in. The problem with this is that you may cut it too large or too small. So what I like to do is put the piping tip in first and then cut around it like this. When you're cutting the end of the piping tip, you have to ensure that the shape of the piping tip is exposed at the end, because otherwise the piping bag will get in the way when you're trying to pipe out your buttercream. So go around with your scissors and the tip of the piping bag should come off just like this and that's ready to use. What I'm going to do is put the piping bag inside the cup which frees up my hand and makes it easier to fill. So I'm going to start with some pink buttercream which I'm going to spoon in just on the side because I'm actually going to add a little bit of white as well to give the buttercream a little bit more depth when I pipe it. So when I take out the piping bag, you can see the top of the piping bag is actually clean of buttercream because I folded the piping bag down around the cup. I'm now gonna gently squeeze the buttercream towards the piping tip, obviously being careful that it doesn't come out the other end, and go in with my next tip. So as you can see, I'm folding the bag down the sides of the cup because it keeps them nice and clean. And I'm gonna repeat the same and fill the four different piping bags with the four different colors still adding a little bit of white every time. You'll see the effect when it comes to piping. Something to also bear in mind is that once the buttercream is in your piping bag, it's almost like it's airtight. So it's better to leave the buttercream in the piping bag rather than out in the bowl, because especially with American buttercream, it tends to crust over. Whereas once it's in the piping bag, it's nice and airtight. And when it comes to piping, it's as if it's fresh. So here are the four bags and now let's get piping. So every piping tip has a number so you know which one I am using. So I'm going to start off with the 1M. This is a classic cupcake tip. I feel like every cake decorator owns one of these. It's a nice open star shape and you get some really nice rosettes with it, especially on top of cupcakes. So the best way to hold and use a piping bag is to twist the top because you don't want the buttercream coming out of the other end of the piping bag and almost cup your hand and place the majority of the buttercream in the palm of your hand and then you're squeezing your fingers and that is the action and that's where all the pressure comes from. So don't worry too much about the end with the piping tip. Also something to note, it's a lot easier to use a piping bag that's less full. So if you are new to piping, then only fill up your piping bags about halfway and you can always refill them as you go. So the part that people struggle with the most when it comes to piping is not actually pressing the buttercream through hard enough. So I'm going to show you what happens when you press the right amount. So again, it's a lot more than you think you should be pressing. You can see when I start to push the buttercream through, I'm getting this really rounded full shape of the buttercream. And this one end tip actually creates a really nice ruffled effect just by squeezing and keeping your hand still. And I'm going to show you what happens if you just do one little squeeze as well. You get a nice star shape, but it's not as full. So of course it depends on what you're using this for but in general people don't squeeze hard enough. So now I'm going to show you a few rosettes using the same tip. A rosette is a little swirl so it's not exactly a cupcake swirl that goes on and on and on. It's just one small circle like this and finish it off with a flick. So that flick is going in the same direction that I was piping. So I'm basically piping a very small O shape and when I get back to where I start I stop squeezing the buttercream but flick off in the same direction. And you can see I've got three nice rosette shapes. Just a side note, piping is practice. I've done this many of times, so don't worry if you don't get these perfect rosettes on your first try. And just to show you a couple of different piping actions using the same tip, I'm going to show you how to make scrolls. So rather than holding the piping bag perpendicular to where you're piping like I was doing before, you actually hold it more to the side and you do a sort of wave action. You go up 
and then down. And when you come down, you stop squeezing and pull the piping bag away. And if you do them continuously, you achieve a border, which is very common to use at the bottom of cakes. Now, if you change the direction of these scrolls every time, you get this sort of plaited effect, which is also used as a nice border on a cake. So here are five examples of using the same tip and showing you the different effects it can make. So the next piping tip I'm going to show you is a 4B. Now it's also referred to as a French star tip. So it's another star tip, but it's got a lot more spikes, so the effect is different. And once again, I'm holding the piping bag in the palm of my hand and piping perpendicular to the tray. I'll show you a simple star to begin with, just to show you the difference in this tip to the last. And for me, this is a perfect topper for a mini cupcake. I'm also gonna show you what happens when I do the same rosette action with this tip. So once again, doing this small circular action and finishing off with a flick when I stop squeezing. So you can see that the shape of the rosette is a lot more intricate. Both look nice. I think I just prefer this one. So I'm going to show you the scrolls once again, but using this different tip and you can see the difference between them. The scrolls are a lot more refined and I think also a little bit neater. Another border that you can definitely try with any tip, but I'm gonna show you with this one is the loop. So once again, you're piping at a diagonal and it's going to be a little bit of concentration, especially if you're going around a whole cake, but you're basically going to be piping continuously in a circle action. So you're going up and around and down again, up and around and down down again repeatedly. Now, if you were to pipe this around the top of a cake, it's a gorgeous way to finish a cake off. I've obviously shown you just a small amount to show you what the piping tip does, but have a go at this because it's a really easy way to achieve an amazing effect on top of a cake. What I also love doing with this tip, especially when I'm piping meringues, is creating little hearts. So it's similar to what I was doing with the scrolls before, but just two smaller scrolls and one pointing in a different diagonal and you get a cute heart shape, which looks really sweet on its own if it was made of meringue, for example, but if you piped it on top of a cake, then you get a heart themed cake. So you can add different decorations to a cake just with the use of piping. So this next piping tip has got to be my favorite. It's very similar to the last one I just showed you, but it's much smaller. This is the PME 13, and this is what I finish most of my cakes off with. Because it's so small, the details are so much more intricate than the other piping tips. So even if you're sticking to simple stars like this, if you put lots of them together, it can be really effective. Now, of course, because this is a smaller piping tip, with the rosettes, I have to do them even smaller. However, don't forget to really push that buttercream through because otherwise you don't get that bulbous shape at the bottom. You want every piping detail full and that comes from the pressure you squeeze with your hand. So here, for example, I'm gonna do a few rosettes and then go in with a collection of stars. And when you put the two together, it just creates a really nice pattern, which I'm sure you've seen on top of my other cakes. So when you do the scrolls with this piping tip, like I said, it's smaller and more intricate. So this is more commonly used for a border around a cake. Whether you do the scrolls in a straight line or crisscrossed or even the circular loop, just bear in mind that it's not gonna appear as big as the other tips did because it is a smaller tip. And to get finer details, like in all aspects of cake decorating, does take a lot more practice. But once you get the hang of it, I'm sure this tip will become your best friend too. So the last tip I'm going to show you is a 104, which is also called a petal tip. And it's shaped almost like a teardrop. Now I say teardrop is because when you use this tip, the small part of the tip has to face upwards or away from the surface that you're using. Well, depending on what shape. So for example, if you wanted to do a ruffle, which I'm going to show you how to do now, you want the small part of the tip facing upwards. So what I'm going to do is position the piping bag on its side and keeping the pressure even as I pipe, just go side to side and start to create this lovely ruffled effect. Now, because of the way I've put in the different colored buttercream, I'm actually getting a really nice depth to it too. So you can see that the white buttercream is almost outlining this shape. This way of piping looks really nice on top of desserts, for example, but also amongst other piped details on top of cakes and cupcakes. So the reason why it's called a petal tip is because you can actually form flower petals with it. If you place the tip on its side and pipe an upside down U shape, you get a petal. Now, I know I've said piping is practice three or four times already, but this is where it really comes into practice. Even I'm still getting used to piping in this way. It's all about keeping the pressure even and consistent as you pipe. So rather than doing individual petals like I did first, if you want to try a continuous one, you get another type of ruffle, which also looks nice on top of a cake, as well as forming flower shapes. And I'll just show you again what I did. So the piping bag is almost laying on its side and going up and down, up and down. And if you change the direction of how you're piping, different sorts of petals form. 
So if you start to angle the piping bag away from the surface, you get a deeper petal. Whereas if you keep the piping bag flat, it's more flat, but still has a three dimension to it. So I recently did a tutorial of a piped cake, which is basically where I combine all of these piping techniques all over the surface of the cake, which looks really effective. So I'm just gonna do a little sneak peek of it here, just to show you what happens when you combine all of these piping tips together. When you are combining the piping tips and you do want to use this petal tip, I would recommend doing it first because of the angle of the piping bag. You can't really fill in gaps with it because you need a 360 access. So I started off with a few random squiggles, which indeed look very random at the moment. But as I start to fill in the empty space with the other piping tips, it starts to pack out. So because I was low on buttercream, I simply just squeezed whatever I had remaining into the other piping bags. But again, this is just to show you what happens when you start putting all these different shapes together. So I have the 1M there, and now I'm going on with a 4B. And all these star shapes are the same, but because of the different sizes of the tips, they look different. And of course, when you add different colors to it, you create an amazing pattern and just continuously fill in the gaps until a textured surface is formed. So you can see that whether you're doing this on top of a smaller cake, a cupcake, or even a large cake, without using any other ingredients or decoration, you can decorate a cake just with different piping tips. So once again, practice makes perfect. The possibilities of piping are endless. If you want to practice and not want to waste any buttercream, then grab yourself either some whipped cream or even that instant mashed potato. I'm not even joking. It's a great way to practice piping without wasting a load of buttercream. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. These are definitely the four piping tips that I would start off with if you want to practice some piping more. I've attached all the necessary links below. And of course, if you do try any of these techniques out, then please tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram. And in the meantime, we'll see you soon for more tutorials.